Hello, welcome to this exciting episode of Sathology Debunking Mythology. Today I am with my friend Joe Steiner, also coming on Sathology International Literature Festival. We are celebrating culture, language, spirituality and history. So Joe, welcome to the show. Thank you, Adi. So, Joe, uh, how you had a long career and, and for the viewers, he's Joe Steiner, very famous jockey and uh, Del Mar Racing uh, and also in many parts of the world. He has ridden 67,000 horses, won 1,000 titles and uh, been a veteran at the Del Mar race course here. So, so Joe, how do you how do you see your success? Like, what do you, how, how, what motivated you to achieve what you achieved? Um, I guess I can go back to uh, when it all began, and it, it all began when I was a small, a small child, uh, growing up in the Pacific Northwest, Seattle area, and I was <clears throat> around five years old. <coughs> excuse me, and um, I was brought up in a in a horse racing environment, which is kind of rare for the average person, um, but my grandfather was a jockey and he became a trainer and then uh, my uncle was my mom's brother became a jockey and I was about five years old and I went to the races and I saw my uncle on that horse and I said, you know, that's what I want to do and I knew from that point on that that's what I wanted to do, um, not knowing what uh, was in store for me. So um, now we'll fast forward to the year I'm, I'm about 12 years old and I've been working at the racetrack in the summers grooming horses, taking care of the horses and getting used to that sort of environment that I wanted to be in. And uh, I was around 12 years old and one of my neighbors had a, a training center at his property and he asked if I would like to learn how to ride the race horses. I said, absolutely. And so I'd go down there every day, go around the shed row and learn how to get my balance and um, learn how to ride these horses and after about a week he, he pulled me to the side and he said hey we need to have a little talk and I said yes and he goes um, I'm afraid that um, I think you're going to get too big and I can only focus on one of you guys and I have two riders here so I'm going to focus on Tim the other rider here and I said okay so the next day I was at the barn working for my grandfather, taking care of the horses, and, and a little man came down the shed row, and he approached me, as small as I was, 4 foot 11, and he said, as soon as you learn how to ride, you come and see me. And I asked my grandfather, well, who is this guy? And he said, this is Johnny Longdon. Now, Johnny Longdon was a legend in the horse racing world. He won over 6,000 races as a jockey, and he won the Triple Crown as a jockey in the Kentucky Derby. And he also won it as a, a trainer once he retired. So he was training at that point. So now by the time I turned 15, my grandfather took me to California. And that's where um, somehow I coincidentally ran into Johnny Longdon again. And I started riding for him. And I ended up riding races starting with Johnny Longdon. And I ended up second in the whole nation for jockeys. So apprentice riders, actually, it was you know my first year, but um, a story that I wanted to share with you because the, the the doors that closed that that were meant to be closed that opened up for me when they're meant to open. Um, I always circle back to this Johnny Longdon, uh, my mentor, um, back in 1917. He, as a small child, uh, was on a train with his mom and dad or his mother actually. And they, they were headed to a boat, and the, the train was late, so they missed the boat. It was a big ship. Turned out that ship was the Titanic. So this is a, this is a little coincidental story that I believe that we all have our, our stories. Um, but this is mine, and these are the, the things that um, I'd like to share with people because there's a lot of coincidences that are not coincidences. They're part of the, the meant-to-be things that happen to us in life. So... Um, and also something I wanted to share with people is um, I, at one point I was, I was really successful, I was doing really well, I was racing at a track and I was second on the standings trying to be the leading rider and I'm very competitive and my grandfather had a, a medium um, come to our barn to, to read us and, and kind of explain what she thought of our futures and what kind of characters we were. And as she went through my family, she finally got to me, and she said, you should have been a preacher. 
And, I, and I, at the time, I was actually hurt by that um, suggestion. But as I, as I go through my journey of my jockey racing career of 35 years um, and everything that I've been through, the, the bigger calling me for me has been to preach in, in a good way, not, not in a religion, but to help people um, become, get in a better mindset and get in an elevated mindset to enjoy this journey that we're on. No, one thing, like in the last two days, what I've experienced is that you are very, you're very peaceful, you're very composed, and uh, I've seen that, and, and also, I mean, these are the hallmarks of a good performer, I think, because in the, even in the sports, like when we go out and play, the, you have to maintain a lot of patience, a lot of, uh, or you have to observe things more, absorb, and then you take decisions. I've seen that. So, what are the, how do you, what, what things you have to take care that you maintain such composure? Um, I believe it's, it all begins with, um, w with all my uh, experiences with the, the horses and the people that I've been fortunate enough to, to experience. I mean, and I, I guess not everybody takes the approach of being open, which I, I choose that, is to be open and, and accepting of people in every level. And I, and I try to give respect to every level of, of human out there. But there was a guy that um, at one point he said to me, "You shouldn't you know in the jockey in jockey terms, you shouldn't be able to, to know whether a jockey just won a race by a nose or lost a race by a nose." And these are <clears throat> huge emotional, uh, you know, differences because when you win by a nose, your emotions are off the charts. You're so pumped up, and if you get beat by a nose, you are so low. And you feel beat up, and to stay in the middle at all times is the is the ideal way that I find it. I, I always try to to stay in that place where no matter what happens, I try to stay right there. That's what I try to share with people: is try to be in that place and try to be stay there and try to not get down and not get. And it's it's practice. It's it's not not everybody can just do that, but. Um, that's what I like to help people with is try to attain that. Um, there's, and there's a lot of tools and, and for example, transcending the mind, I believe is probably one of the most powerful tools that I've found um, in my life and, and it, it all comes to you when it's meant to come to you in your, in your lifetime and, um, and, and it's, I believe that like people have people come into their lives and they're like, why did that happen? But there's a bigger meaning going on, and there's a bigger meaning why knowledge is being brought to you, and you're ready to accept that. So um, that's what that's what I like to share is that knowledge that I gained to people that may be on that spot where they're like, "Hey, wow, I just I get it. That I want to I want to find out what's going on with you." Yeah, oftentimes, like uh, you study in the colleges and. Uh educational institutions, not only just in the U.S., but in other places in India also, mind is the most neglected topic, and which is the most important topic in our bodies. And people take care of their physical bodies, so they go to gym, <coughs> and uh, they do physical exercises to make your body stronger. But the minds are very weak, and you know, people are not focused on that at all. So I think... Uh, the, that knowledge is, needs to be given, and for viewers, he was referring to the book, Transcending the Mind book. So, so how do you see, like, uh, if you were to coach somebody today, and many viewers are watching and seeing that how they can develop that competitive edge, because the sporting lifestyle is, is, uh, is a very healthy lifestyle, but it can be used in personal lives also. Mm -hmm. in a big way. Yeah, yeah I, I believe that it's, there's a lot of parallels. Um, and, and people, <clears throat> I, I think everybody's looking for that, um, that middle ground, finding happiness, um, and trying to stay, uh, put themselves in the right. And it, it is your mind that has to be taken care of first. Uh, physically, you've got you to have the body that can take care of the mind and 
and, and so you can create this beautiful journey that we're uh, blessed to take. Um, so it, it's a combination of things. Um, but I, I believe that for, for like me, um, sometimes I, I will just have people talk to me or it depends, it goes both ways and depending on the character. But some people just need to express themselves and then it starts, you start feeling the, the uh, let's say, elevating. And this is the, the state that I try to, in, um, to uh, let's say, produce with people and help, and help them experience more and try to get into that on in, in a more regular basis. So I think that's, that's what my gift is, is to try to help that. And, and with everything that I learned, this is where I give back. And it's all my experiences through life of my journey. You were telling me the incident about one of the critical races you had and uh, and you, how, what, you, when you won it, but what you had to go through it. Can you explain one of the critical races that you had? Like the um, let's say, um, let's say uh, if I, if I, um, if I had a lot of pressure to win the race. Yes. Oh, well, I, actually, I can, I can tell you, um, at the end of my career, I actually, <clears throat> had a um, an, an experience where um, I had a horse that in, actually got injured, and I ha and I was pressured to ride that race that day, and there was a lot of um, money being bet on the horse, and the horse was being sold the same day, and for a lot of money, and people flew in from the east coast to the west coast to watch this horse race, and um, I knew there was something wrong with it, but I had to let it run. And he injured his leg. So the, there's decisions that we have to make, and, and sometimes you can relate to that in life. We sometimes we have to do something, we and and we realize we shouldn't have done it. And um, some in that case, I did, and um, I had to reflect back upon that and um, and learn a lesson from it because this is all part of the journey. Is is we if you're not if you're not making mistakes, we're we're not learning, as we know. So that was one of the the one, I've had so many experiences because I've I've been on so many horses and so many different people in different scenarios that I could share these different stories. But um, if that was one little story, that'd be helpful. Yeah, because I I I'm, I know that uh, it's uh, the the decisions go or no go are the toughest decisions to do, and many of the viewers and I also struggled with that. That should we do it or should we not do it? Yeah. In those critical moments, you need to f consider all factors, but the time is now. You have decided at that time. Mm -hmm. And at that time, you have to take a decision, sometimes bad or wrong, and it depends on the circumstances. But what happened to the outcome of that race then? Uh, <clears throat> well, it, it wasn't good. The horse uh, injured its leg, and um, this ended my career. The trainer that I was riding for was a woman, and she ended her life. And it was a bad day. It was a real ended bad. Ended her life. It ended her life. She jumped off a bridge. Why? Um, she was so depressed about the horse and the situation, um, and I believe there were underlying issues with her. And you could read about this, and that was not something I wanted to bring up, but it's actually something that happened to me that that was like a sign for me to step away from racing because. That day, the horse injured its leg, and I and I fortunately was able to keep him up instead of him falling. <clears throat> That's extreme an extreme example of what we experience as jockeys because um, there's so much pressure on that. Like, there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of taken for granted because people bet their money and they they expect that horse to win because on the racing form it says it should win, but if um, if it doesn't win, the guys are mad, and sometimes. You know, like I said, it's a very dangerous sport. <clears throat> Hence the reason I broke over 40 bones through the years that I raced. But um, it, it's not something that um, is, uh, you know, for us, it's, it's I say my prayers and I go and do my best. And I'm thankful when I come back that I made it back to, to ride another day because this is what I, my passion is, is to ride these horses. But... Um, this is uh, something that people take for granted because they're gamblers and they and they expect the horse to win, but they also don't take in, into the account that it's very dangerous for horse and rider. But um, this is a risk that we take, um, understandable. But um, anyway, that's that's why I uh, that's like I said, through the years I am thankful, but I always come back because that's what I love to do. So and I will continue to 
support it because um, the horses are taken better care of than most people that we know. And uh, some, there's some very good people in the business. And um, it's like anything in this, in this world. There's 99% of the people are doing everything right in a good way from their soul and their heart. And 1% is not, and that's the, the part that's being brought up to the public <clears throat> and the, the part that's being shown, and then everybody thinks that it's a corrupt operation in, in a lot of sports or just businesses even. Um, so in racing, this, is, this goes on also, but for 99% of the people do things on the up and up in a good way, and the horses are very well treated. So and it's, a, it's a very passionate passionate sport as you see now that you've been out there yeah. uh, in in uh, you know the same situation I've seen in Japan also in Japan also people people they're not able to achieve something they commit uh, they jump in front of the trains yeah and but why so much when when they know that success or failure sometimes is not in our hands actually that's right that did some some other factors also affect it yeah um, I you know Honestly, I, you know, I've come across a lot of these people that in my experiences as a jockey and <clears throat> there's a lot of reasons for uh, imbalances in, our, in ourselves and you know, some of us jockeys become bulimic um, to keep our weight down um, which, which can cause a chemical imbalance and then causes depression and then if you add alcohol to that it'll be, create a, a combination that um, I've unfortunately lost a lot of friends to that uh, through the years. So um, that's why I'm, I, I try to help people with um, these imbalances that once I find out if they have, like, like if they're bulimic or something like this, I say, I know, I know, because I've been through this. So I know how that is a very big challenge to, to get out of. So, but <clears throat> there's different reasons why people um, end up taking their life um, and it's a very sad thing for everybody around, um, but it's it's um, <clears throat> the only way for them at the time, and it's unfortunate. Bulimic can be mean what can mean. So bulimic, it, it goes along with anybody that that has to watch their their weight. Uh, ballerinas are 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 very common at this. Jockeys more in the olden days, not as much now because. They're being trained to eat properly. <clears throat> and, and this is a, a very important thing is education on how to eat properly, even the average person. Uh, your diet is, is key to your health, uh, then, then it's your mind. So all these things factor in. Um, and so for me, I learned the, the, the talent of being bulimic, which is meaning eating food and then getting rid of it. Um, so a mm. uh, polite way of getting it out of your body so um, <clears throat> and and it becomes a and it's not a gross thing because it's you just ate it and then it comes back out um, and, it, and it creates endorphins in your body and it and it makes you it gives you a high and you feel great and you, and you're just like lively but then you do it again you eat and sometimes these people will eat all day long and I would do that <clears throat> and and what happens eventually is it, it causes a chemical imbalance in your body and which can bring depression and you can sometimes not get out of it and it can cause a lot of physical damage also. So wow. these are all things that a lot of jockeys and ballerinas will experience because they're trying to keep their weight at a, at a certain level and perhaps maybe their bodies are not meant to be that weight but um, that was one of the things I was taught <clears throat> And I wish I didn't learn it, but it was something that I had to experience, and I had to I had to retrain myself how to eat properly, and to get back to just the normal world again, um, which is another key uh, factor for me is helping people with their diet because um, I believe that's a very important no, thing. Diet is, is a very important thing. Right, it's the things important. that we take into our bodies. Yes, because we yeah. all know here. You know, because they, most of the people they. I saw it myself in my own life uh, because I maintain a strict diet, and uh, but still, if the diet is not proper, it creates a problem in your digestion as well as the mood. Exactly. Mood swings if uh, if the diet is not okay, and nowadays in the diet we take vitamins all the time, especially in the West here. 
because the vitamins are missing in some. Vitamin D, I was told, the biggest deficiency nowadays. I heard that. You know, people uh, have to. I see, you know, it's more in uh, vitamin D would be recommended more in a place that's not as sunny as mm. like this California. <clears throat> California, but um, they do recommend that in calcium, I think, or uh, there was magnesium. Magnesium <clears throat> was another uh, huge one that they recommend. Um, but you know, I don't take a whole lot of anything. I I just try to eat properly, um, and and do. Th keep myself in the right place. So I fixed the magnesium problem by eating pine nuts. Pine nuts have a lot of magnesium. Really? And for and in any case I work outside in my backyard and with the plants. So vitamin D deficiency is not there. But I did take supplements for some time because people don't go out of their homes. Yes. And they work in the air conditioned environment. And they and, and yeah there's a lot of people that never leave their home. So and if you live in uh, Arizona, you, a lot of people probably never get out during the summer because they have to stay inside. So I think that would probably be a requirement. Um, another thing that I use is a thing called a Beamer, a B-E-M-E-R, and, it's, and it just helps the blood flow and helps the body heal itself. And I've got a lot of experience with that. But there are certain things that, I mean, it, is that it a, like for, a bit of medicine or what is it? It's that? a blanket that I lay on. Oh, Beamer. Yeah, it's a P-E-M-F. It's a, a, a P-E-M-F is like a pulsed electromagnetic signal that uh -huh. runs through your body. Uh -huh. um, so it's a German designed uh, device that's been out for 25 years uh -huh. and I lay on a blanket or I put it across me and an example of what happened, what, what goes on is what it is, it's increasing your, your blood flow on the, the microcirculation of your blood. So the smallest vessels of your blood and helps it circulate and heal your body. So mm -hmm. it's, it's like a holistic healer. Your own body's healing itself when you're young your body heals itself. When you get older, things slow down, and this is where sometimes you need a little help. And it's something that I've been using for about seven years now. Mm. And, and, and one little story, I got kicked in the back, and I broke eight ribs back here, and, I, and a punctured lung. It's amazing I lived. It was, uh, it was very fortunate, um, but they put five plates in there. And I'm, the bruising from this had settled in my pelvic area. I was black there. And I had my beamer, I just put it across my chest continually, just nonstop as I got home. And I couldn't, I had to sit up like this. And the second day that I was home, it, I, I felt like I drank a gallon of water. I had to use the restroom. And I got up the next morning after using the restroom the night before, and all the bruising had flushed from my body. Mm. So this is what's going on. So something that, you know, I, I like to recommend to people to look into, um, for their own health benefit, diet and exercise, Beamer, mindset. But mindset's the biggest one because that's the one that's going to take us to the places that we need to go. No, so. true, actually. The right mindset is never taught. Uh, no, no, tell me about that experience of yours with the, with the you introduced us to the, uh, the another, another jockey, your uncle, uh, Longden. Long uh-huh. And but another one who you met later on, and they were trying to experience. They explained you that you need to try other races also, not just in Del Mar. Oh, well, like so after um, <clears throat> after uh, my like apprenticeship, yeah. yeah, after my apprenticeship, my first year of racing, and I was second in the nation. Um, it, it got tough because when I began my career in Southern California, I was racing at Santa Anita uh, Santa Anita Racetrack. Hollywood Park and Del Mar Racetrack, and they were the, the there was 15 Hall of Fame jockeys. So they were all they all won three, four, five thousand races, that kind of stuff, and they're all just leading riders wherever they came from that were what I was riding with. That's where I started. So once I lost my apprenticeship, and which which is a to explain an apprenticeship, I was allowed five pounds less than everybody else in the race. So if a horse was carrying on its back, if you look in the program. They, they're carrying 120 pounds, I had 115. And so if they had 115, I was 110. So it, for a horse, that five pounds can make it a difference. So that was my advantage for that first year. After I lost that apprenticeship, I was at the same weight as everybody else. Now, now with my second in the nation, but I only won 67 races and not a lot of experience compared to these guys that have won 5,000 races, I was forced to go somewhere else. So from then on, I ended up, through my 35 years, I raced at 52 racetracks. 
I mean, the whole goal was looking for an environment that I felt like was home for me. But in, 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 in the journey that I took, I was able to make connections with people in every state, every track that I went to that were forever friends, um, more on Facebook now, but I'm just saying I was able to create a, a big connection with a lot of people which enabled me to be, um, a, let's say, a chameleon in the environments that I was that I can adapt to any situation. I think it's, this is a, a good thing if you get out of your place and, and step into different environments and try to, you know, if you get along with people, like I, I, I kind of, um, I needed to because this, you have to be compatible with, with all levels of people, and which, it, which has brought me to where I am now because now I'm able to deal with um, somebody who sweeps the floor or somebody who's a multi-billionaire, because we're all the same. In between all that, there, there may be a, a judgment call on somebody, but for me, we're all the same. So I enjoy that. I enjoy that I feel that way, and I've always felt that way about people, um, and that's why I want to make a difference in people's lives. I, 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 I care deeply on on someone's not feeling here, or maybe they're feeling here, and they're, or they're doing that uh, roller coaster mentally. So... Um, I, like I said, I, I try to share my gift and I'm tra always trying to enhance my gift and through people like Adi here, um, I, um, these are the things that happen to us in our lives. People come into your life for you to advance. Um, and then, but my job is to advance true. and help. Yeah, true, very true, very true. Uh, tell me one thing, like uh, when we are planning a an initiative like you you have a whole experience everyone has an experience but you're in a specific scenario you're in a very competitive environment mm -hmm. very competitive high pressure highly people are looking up to you you're going to lose money mm -hmm. and it will happen in two minutes mm -hmm. it's not even so people's a lot of expectations are riding on you there so how do you yeah. handle that because you're in the mm -hmm. lens you're on the TV screen, your people are watching you, and how do you handle that? This is the pressure most people don't face. You're right, because it, it's, it's, all about, it's all about the win, because let's say um, we're, we're racing for money, we're racing for the win, we're racing for the win for the horse, but the people that are connected to the horse, the owners, the trainer, the exercise boy that trained the horse in the morning, the team, uh, and there's a lot of people involved. So and people are betting on it. And, and the people that are betting on it are the ones that are yelling at me. So, <clears throat> and and this is the the pressure that we that we get is, and and not not only at the racetrack that I'm racing at are the people looking at me, betting on me, but the, we're also televised throughout the country at different facilities. So there might be two million people watching me at one race. Um, so. If, if you think about that, it could be overwhelming, but I, I never think about that. I, my, my place was always to pay, put myself right there on the back of that horse and connect and become one and focus and, and try to get that horse in the state of mind that we're going to win. And it's all about being calm, focused, and, and directed at the, at the finish line. So I think um, that's another thing that people can relate to because I think w we need to focus and, and focus on the finish line, whatever we're, we're trying to attain, whatever goals we're working towards, whatever, whether it be small or big or um, or anything. I mean, it's, I, I think having a having a goal set and with focus on it, um, that's what I that's what I did. It's where I I blocked out all the other noise of the the people with the, their their intentions of. Um, Maybe they, if they got mad at me after the race and stuff, it didn't bother me. Um, like I said, the the biggest thing that like as a year early early on in my career as a young man, I learned to stay even. So uh, even if I got beat and I should be feeling down, um, I stayed there. I stayed here. And even if I just won five races in one day, which I have before, if you won five races and went in one day, you must be thinking I'm the best. I, I feel like I'm on top of the world. But I stayed right here, and that's my... Just like, uh, 
you are telling about the last phase, like you stayed in the same place when it, the, it stopped recording. Okay. So come again, what you said? Yeah. So so I I think the the biggest key for me how how did I deal with the the pressures of the people betting and the and the owners that were expecting their horse to win and this horse that I worked with and we're all wanting to win and he doesn't win. It, it, the 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 key that I that I learned as a young rider was to stay in that middle ground, that even middle place, and not being too up or too down. Um, whether if I just got beat on that horse and I was feeling so so sad and hurt inside, and because the pressure was on me and I let everybody down, um, it's not it's hard not to feel that way. But I stayed here, and let's say I won five races that day, which I have done before, and and how can you not feel up here on the top of the world, but I stayed right here, and that was my key. I stayed right in the middle, and I think this is important, important in life, is try to stay in the middle and try to enjoy the moments, absolutely, but don't get down when things don't go, because there's another day. It's very easy to say that, but most of the people cannot take it because you're right. Yeah, there's a lot of at stake. You know, I totally. Many people gave me that advi advice that uh, it's impossible, but it's very difficult internally sometimes it to is. deal with it. It is, and and like um, I actually coach a jockey, and in the other day he had he finished second and third, and he was he was mad at himself because he didn't win, and he was beating himself up. And I, I said to him, did you, did you, were you able to walk out of the track when you were done? And he said, yeah. He said, oh, you know, but he was very upset. And I said, and, and soon afterwards, one of our friends went down in a race and got hurt. And he was, and my friend was very upset about that. He, and then I, then I said, this is why I'm telling you, no matter what, I mean, for us, we're risking our lives. For the average person and the pressures, it's not that extreme. But it's not the end of the world either. So no matter what, no matter what, it's not the end of the world. And sometimes bad things that happen to us are good things. And, and for me, I always look at it that way. I always say, even though that wasn't a good experience, I'm thankful for it because at least I did it. I learned from it. I'm not happy about it, but it was a good experience. Now we'll move on and create better experiences. True, true. I think uh, the, there is always a next chance. Long Always the next chance. As long as you're alive, as and long as you're life. not in a wheelchair, you know th this is this was my options. Well, you're still alive. You're you know that, but if you're in a wheelchair, I've experienced a lot of that also. So, this would be the worst thing that can happen to somebody, or it all depends on the person how they deal with it. But um, for us, that would be the the worst thing that could happen to an athlete to end up in a wheelchair. But um, at the end of the day, if you're still walking. Thank you for every limb that I have on my body. My fingers work and my mind works and my eyes open and I can see and I can breathe. These are all things that we take for granted every second of the day, a lot of us. And just realizing it's not till you get sick and it's not till you break your arm that you go, man, I wish my arm worked. I wish I wasn't sick. Um, but wow, every day, these are the things that we need to remind ourselves, um, among other things. But... These are some things that I like to share that I think that people do take for granted, but they complain about everything else. And if you can try to find the things, like they always say gratitude, gratitude is very, very important. True, I think. I mean, you hit the nail, gratitude. I mean, I cannot say more on that because every minute you need to, if you're not grateful every minute, I think you cannot do anything in life. I agree. You know, I always say I have four partners, I mean myself and Jagannath. Yeah. And, uh, but the gratitude part is there because every minute, the more grateful you are, the more successful you feel. Because success is all about feeling, mm -hmm. not the others clapping. Because you have seen so many people clapping. Yeah. But when it's, you feel success, is a different thing, actually. It is. It is a whole different feeling. And, and I know you, everybody can relate to that because yeah. it's, Small it's what we feel... And it might you you might not even feel it anywhere else, but it's it's all right inside here, and it might not be a whole lot to you know if that, but that's what we're looking for is that 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 victory inside and that happiness that we get from these things. So thank you 
viewers, this is Joe Steiner and I think you got some inspiration from this video. Do like, share and subscribe and let me know your feedback. Me and Joe will do many such shows and, and as the literature festival comes, we are going to have many such people sitting on the same couch discussing many different aspects of culture, history, language and spirituality. Thank you.